So welcome, my dear students. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is your teacher, Dr. Usama Kashwa. And still we are talking about the project management, definition of project management, and why project management, what is the need to have a project management, what are the useful consequences and the positive consequences of having a project management, and so on. So we'll move on now directly to our own uh, uh, parts of curriculum that deal with the meaning of the uh, uh, project management and the su successful project management as well. So on the surface side, the first thing is, we'll go directly into uh, the, uh, our tri tribal, tribal constraints or what we call it the triangle. We call it the triangle. Like I said before, I said in another video, we have the triangle consists of the cost and the time and the scope. Uh, those constraints, like we said before also, they, those constraints, they interact. They work all together, not separated than each other, but interacting means that they work in the same time, that cost, the time and the scope. A successful project balance these constraints. So the one you cannot you you cannot uh, escape of one of them or discard one of them, but you have to put in your concern that wherever there is a project management, that means there is three pillars or three basic lines. Those are the cost, the time, and the scope. A successful project uh, balance these constraints, like we said, given we can't. Uh, have unlimited resources or unlimited time. Of course, always you are under the constraints of the time and the resources, the inputs, the money, the capital. This is the resources. You have only uh, a financing um, with the limits. You cannot increase this limit in your own or how do you can increase it by financing, by looking to expand uh, for a mortgage or uh, to borrow from a bank or to take um, um, a money with interest rate. So all this to finance your own project. So still your own resources are very limited. Uh, we also, we need to manage all the three constraints because of those constraints, they need a better management. Project management gives the tools to do this. So the project management help you to manage effectively, effectively the costs, to manage effectively the time, and to manage effectively the scope. Uh, factors shared by successful products. We talked before about the product. Now we'll talk about what is the common factors that all the successful projects they have. What are those factors that all the successful projects own altogether? Clear and agreed objectives. This is the first point. Clear objective. The objective is clear very well determined. Determined in numerics, I can say as example that I'm planning to have a pleasant results, no, or prosperous results, no. I'm planning to produce 100,000 units. I'm planning to move from producing eight, this is the right one. I'm planning to move from producing 80,000 units into producing 100,000 units. I'm, I'm looking forward for increasing my return on investment from 10% into 12%. I'm planning to increase my capacity, my work capacity from 80% now into 90% within one year. So you have to put your objectives in numbers and numbers are clear, attainable. Attainable means you can reach to these numbers. As example, I don't say I have a very poor factory and the machines are very old and very depreciated. And I will say, as example, 
uh, I will produce 1 million units. You hardly with these machines can produce only 10,000. So don't be very, very dreamy. Don't be very dreamy. Just uh, your plans should be based on your own real abilities and capabilities without any expansion for no reason or for a mistakes or if a mistake is done or whatever. So don't go beyond. Committed and effective team, uh, any work without the uh, committed, there is a commitment inside them to work hard and to do the job. And in the same time, effective in their own productivity, cooperative team, know how to communicate with each other, um, very cooperative. The conflicts level in between them is in the zero level or almost on the zero level. All these will make the team very hard worker and successful. And that will lead to the successful project as well. Planning, if you plan right, then your project will succeed. Like I just want you to remember what we said before, failing to plan is planning to fail. If you didn't plan for anything, then you are planning to fail. Then this is what will happen. Management controls also. So the control means, what is the meaning of the word control? Control means that you put standards and measure the real performance, then compare between them. I plan for producing 10 units of this. I plan to produce, plan to produce 10 cell phone. This is the standard. I actually measured the actual performance. I found myself produced only eight phone. Instead of producing 10 as planned, I produced only eight. Then there is a deviation of two cell phones down. Why? Why is this? So control tell me to put the standards measure the real performance or the actual performance, then compare between the plan or the standard and the real performance. Why I do this? To find out the gaps. What's wrong? I plan to produce 10 cell phone. I produced only eight. That means two are down, less than what I planned. So I will check not to catch the mistakes because control, control is not for catching mistakes, but control rather is for correcting the mistakes if found. So I do the control to correct the mistakes when I find it. So if there is a good control, that means a successful project. Repeated reappraisal, yes. And this is also goes compatible with the total quality management and doing the right things and if working efficiently and effectively. And once this also will lead to the successful project, product, project. also a good communication and the good communicators will lead to successful product project. So all those are the factors which will lead to successful uh, projects. Uh, I will put a question here, actually. I will be get um, a chance like this. Whenever I get a chance, we will find. Uh, so we'll say here, uh, what? Let us say about the plan, the new slide, how it looks like blank, what? Okay, then we'll choose another slide. Okay, here we go. What are the common factors in successful products? Oh, 
all projects, successful projects. What are the common factors in successful projects? What are the common factors in successful projects? And the answer should be here. And please send your answers into the chat box right now, please. You can send it into your chat box. This is the chat box. You can get it from here and you can send your answer through the chat box here. Thank you so much. So what are the common factors in successful projects? Like we said before in the previous slide, uh, we said uh, that is uh, that is basically the plan are clear, uh, like we see here. Uh, factors, uh, objectives, clear objectives, team planning. I can leave this page for you for around five minutes. Here we'll stop here for five minutes for answering this question. What are the factors or the common factors in successful uh, projects? So they are like what we said here just now, clear and agreed objectives and effective team, planning, management control, repeated appraisal communication as well. We'll stop here around five minutes to have answer. And you can also uh, Google search it to find more details if you want more than this about the successful projects. What are the common factors in successful projects? So we are back. And now uh, we went to the next slide, which is, uh, okay, we'll go to the first point to uh, demonstrate the first point that's clear and agreed objectives. In the first point, which we had to talk about, clear and agreed objectives. Uh, discuss with stakeholders, people having the problem, who will use the product? Discuss with seniors, management. So you, if you want a clear objective, check out with all the stakeholders. What do we mean by the word stakeholders? Stakeholders are those who has benefits in dealing with the organization. Those people who have benefits in dealing with the organization who have benefits to deal with you either direct or indirect uh, what so this is the meaning of stakeholders people having the problem who will use the end product the end product is the end user or the word end means it goes to the final consumer that's the meaning of the word end it means it go to the final consumer Discuss with the senior management and other stakeholders to gain buy-in business case. So also you have to discuss all the issues regarding the project, the feasibility studies and who will buy your product and when they will buy it and what the category of the people who will buy your product. So you will go through all this. Formal requirements, documentation signed off. Okay. Also, the documentation, we said uh, the documentation of each stage of the product life cycle, that will be very important. The second point we talk about is committed and effective team. Without good team work, don't expect to the project for the project to succeed. Without a good team work. Uh, okay. Know and eager to achieve objectives. Those are the teamwork which you will have. Have the skills necessary to do this, to do the work. So they have, are they are skillful or no to do the work. Likely to be in place through the project. And 
So those are the points which you have to care about when uh, regarding the team work which you have. Also, I will add to this, there must be a low level of conflict between the team members, a lower level of conflict between the team members. Also, there must be a cooperative, they must cooperate together. No hard feeling between them, no stress, no conflict between their ideas. So all of them are having a unity of direction. All of them are, they know their own task, their own objective, and they are working to achieve it. So this we call them um, a, a good effective team work. Now the next point we talk about was planning. Planning is one of the points that leads the project into success. success. Planning is one of the points that will lead the project into success. So planning is a route map from here to the solution. Planning tell me where I am, where I want to go, how I can go there. Planning simply tell me where I am now, where I want to go, how I will go there. This is planning in simple. Route map from here to the solution detailed enough to assign work. So the plan will include as example, uh, the objectives and will uh, include the strategy and will include also the policy and will include the programs and procedures and rules which will uh, be to achieve the plan. Planning also, we have many kinds of planning. We have long run plan, which is more than 10 years. We have midterm plan, which is from three to five years. And we have short time plan, which is less than one year. Uh, planning also is divided into kinds of plans like strategic plan, which is of a vital important for the company. We call it a strategic plan. We have also operational plan, which is tactical, more tactical about the details of the work. And uh, those are the main two uh, kinds of operation of plans. Strategic plan, like you immigrate to Canada, as example, this strategic plan, it's, uh, its frequency is very low. You don't do strategic plan every day. The consequences of such a plan is very dangerous and very crucial. If you make a mistake, mistake in the strategic plan, it leads to a disaster for the whole project. It leads to a very, very severe uh, negative consequences to the project if you made as a mistake or an error in the strategic plan. Uh, flexible enough to adapt surprises, yes. Usually the best plan is what takes into consideration what we said, what if analysis. So don't put your plan only straight ahead and the only scenario. You should put more than a scenario, as example, I will put a scenario for expansion, increasing my profits, increasing my business, in case that the market or the economic was very flourishing or was very nice. And uh, the demand is high, a high demand economy. But I won't stop like this. I will put another scenario in case if there is a depression, or a recession or a failure in the market is, or down, the market is down. Like what happened in 2008 and in 1927, when the whole world went to a deflation or a recession that because of the people were not able to buy and sell and all the business had been down and mostly some of the business locked down. Uh, and there was bankruptcy and so on. So you don't have to put only one plan, but you have to put in your consideration, there must be a flexible 
flexible like this word you can see it flexible flexible the word flexible i'm pointing it out here flexible which means you can change the plan based on the change in the out situation you change the plan based on the change in the outer circumstances this is the meaning of flexible okay we're talking still about the reasons for the success of a business. We're still talking about the reasons of the success of a business. We're still talking about the reasons of the success of a business. And now we came to the control. And I said before, control means uh, that you compare the standards with the actual results to check out for any mistakes or deviations found. And not to catch the mistakes, the purpose is not to catch the mistakes, but to correct these mistakes. So the reason from the control process is to correct the mistakes rather than just catch these mistakes. Track work being done, identify and deal with risks and issues formal change control process so uh, even the control itself it needs some time to change we might change in the standards based on changing the plan so if i change the plan i will change the standards so consequently i will change the uh, control uh, process budgetary management also budget is like what you're trying to expect how the future will be in uh, revenues and expenditures. So yeah, so you, you will put what if analysis or a scenario for many cases, each case like what will happen if this case situation happened in, in, the, in the business environment, I will do this plan. If uh, case B happened, I will do this plan and we will see later on uh, some uh, alternate mathematical uh, formulas to deal with these situations. What if analysis, or we call it sensitivity analysis, which means change in your plan based in a change according in the environment. So the environment made some changes and you will change your plans based as a consequent for these or as a result for these changes. Cool. Repeated appraisal is one of also the points that will lead to the success of a project. The points that will lead to the success of a project is repeated appraisal. Has the environment changed? Okay. If the environment has changed, have likely costs increased or benefit reduced or check out all these points is the project still needed so while those uh, variables are changing like a change in the environment a change in the cost in the benefits on the revenues uh, the interest of the your clients is reduced or whatever Am I still can do the project or no? So I have to be very responsive for the external environment around me. I have to be very responsive for all the uh, changes in the environment around me. That's why like here we said repeated appraisal. Of course, communication is one of the most important points uh in the communication is one of the most important points because communication means simply to send and receive information simply send and receive information that's perfect okay so the model of the communication depends is whether it is one-way communication or two ways of communication so that's why we always put a big uh, rule or set a big rule for the communication as one of the pillars of the success 
of the project management. One of the major points. So uh, communication will build a strong team, will keep stakeholders on board because you are always, when you have a, a good, clear information system and you have uh, all the kind of, you have two ways communication between you and your own stakeholders. And you know their feedback about your products, about their needs, whatever. And you do accordingly, you act or behave accordingly. Those all uh, will make your communication positive. You make sure that everything is understood in the right position or the right situation without mistakes. Uh, provide yourself as owner with the information needed. So also, these are the most important point for the communication system. Okay. So we can say they are gives, G-I-V-E-S. So if I tell you, what do you mean by gives for the success of a project? What do you mean by gives? So G uh, gives are like this. We have clear and agreed objectives. Uh, the clear and agreed objectives, committed and effective team, uh, planning, management control, repeated appraisal, communication. Each one of them will give one of those parts. As example, clear and agreed objective will give stakeholders by a known destination. Committed and effective team will give capability and desire to perform well. Planning will give route to success. Management control will give guidance to cost control because we will talk about the cost control later on. Repeated appraisal will give check project still valid and communication of course, and we will have a chapter about the communication here will give us ties everything together. Uh, before I leave here, I have to put some questions and I will go back. We took the first question here. I will put here, and this question also you Google it, you Google, you don't have even to be uh, sufficient with this answer, you can Google for the effective team, what are the effective team uh, traits or characteristics or what should own or should possess? Okay, how can be an effective team? So I will say here a question. Uh, I will put a slide here, new slide. Uh, this slide will be, sorry. It's okay, no worries, no worries, okay. What is the ideal effective team? Or describe or discuss the ideal effective team, discuss the ideal effective team. And like we said before, please Google it. Uh, you will find uh, many points regarding the ideal effective team. So you can work on it as well. Discuss the ideal effective team, how we be like the communication, the system of communication and so on. So I want you please to answer this question. Answering please, uh, go to the chat box. Here is the chat box here and answer your question within the chat box and send it to me here. Thank you so much. So this was about the ideal uh, effective team. I will stop here for around five minutes to have some answers from you guys about these questions. Uh, uh, regarding, I will see the points, how it goes like when you answer, thank you. We'll stop here like around five minutes.
to get an answer for discuss the ideal effective team. So we'll come back, we are back, and we'll go now to the next slide, which is planning, and we said about planning. Uh, let me give a question, an, a regular question was about what I said just now from a few minutes about the planning and the importance of planning. Planning, like I said before, where I am, where I want to go, how I will go there. This is simply the planning, planning the standards. So we'll say, what is the effective planning or what is the effective planning criteria? What are the basics in effective planning or what are the elements of effective, effective planning? That is, I want you to know the answer of this question, please. So here we'll say new slides. We'll just do it. Uh, So here we go. What are the elements of effective planning? It means how planning should be, how planning should be. That, that's the meaning of it. Uh, what are the elements of effective planning? It means how planning should be, how planning should be. What are the elements of effective planning? How planning should be? Cool, that's nice. What are the elements of effective planning? Please search Google because I told you this now, planning must be very in a numerics. You don't, it must be uh, attainable and achievable. Uh, you have to put standards or plans that you can recognize and you can realize and you can achieve not put hard uh, objects for yourself to, and you will not be able to achieve it. No, put something is easy for you to achieve it. Uh, also, uh, planning must be clear for all the managerial levels. And planning must be based on cost and benefit analysis. Okay. Uh, so clear, objective, numeric, all those are uh, factors or elements in a, an effective plan. Okay. We'll wait here another five minutes for you guys to answer this question. You can Google the answer. You can Google search the answer and send your answers to uh the chat box here the chat box here you can send the answers here please thank you So we are back now. We went and we said, look about management control as one of the factors that will lead to the success of the project uh, in, in, a, in, a, in any project. Uh, so management control, and we said control means putting setting standards, measuring the performance, Measuring the gap between the standards and the actual performance, then correcting deviations. That's why now I will ask about uh, 
what or what define define control and define control and its process define control and its process so for process like i said setting the standards measuring the real performance finding the gap between the standards and the performance and finally correcting any deviation found correcting any negative deviation found not positive any negative deviation found like i told you i plan to produce 10 cell phones i only produced eight then the plan is more than the actual performance in that case i have to correct the deviation check out why there are two down two units not produced why and check out so that i can avoid this problem futurely or in the future this is now i will stop here for around five minutes we'll stop here for around five minutes please to get your answer again you can google search your answers you can google search your answers so we are back now uh, and this was second question today or third question today define control and its process we'll move forward now to another point uh, the repeated reappraisal, reappraisal uh, means that like i told you that you deal based on the change in the environment and you act basically or accordingly. Um, anything happen in the environment that you will prepare yourself and you will fit your custom yourself again 
or response. And the response must be quickly, as we will see in the mathematical approach, uh, the response for any event happened uh, in the external environment of a product or project, it must be very quickly the response so that uh, there will be negative effect on the performance or the outcomes of the project. The communication is one of the main points, which is very important for the success of any project. It's only for, not for a project, a project in particular, and any business in general, any, any work in super general, communication is one of the main important points because without communication, don't expect any success for any project. So I will ask here now, actually, I will stop here and I will have a video about the communication, just will see a video, small video about the communication. And then we will go to some questions about the communications. We'll check out for a video about the communication. What do you mean by the communication process? Then we'll go into uh, questions about communication because it's very important. And we have also a chapter, a separated chapter, handling the communication problem. Handling the communication problem and how it affects the business. Okay. Let's go now, let's move forward. We'll take this video because it's including also the types of uh, communication. So we can work on this video that is um, not bad. Hey guys, I'm Surbi and welcome to my channel Key Differences. In this video lecture, we will discuss what is communication, its process, types, and the seven C's of communication. communication. So friends, let's move on to our video. Communication. Communication is a common phenomenon. As we all are social animals, we cannot live without communicating. Indeed, the very attempt not to communicate, communicates something. Communication implies a two-way process of transferring information, ideas, feelings, or opinions. So it is two-way because we have two kinds of communication. One-way communication like what I'm doing now. One way communication that I am the sender and you, my dear students, are the receivers. We call it one way communication. The TV, 
the TV is one way communication because the announcer is talking and the audience or the, uh, uh, the people are watching. So it's only because if you have a question as an audience, if you have a question, you won't be able to ask the announcer. So he's sending only information. This we call it, when you send only information, we call it one-way communication. But two-way communication, when we together in interact, like if you ask me a question now, that means it's the model of two-way communication because there is a feedback from you. So I talk, then you reply me. That is two-way communication. If I tell you, hello, how are you? Then you tell me if I'm fine, thank you. That means it is two-way communication. But if I'm just talking in the radio and no one is listening to me, this is one-way communication. Okay. Or even someone is listening but cannot respond because in the radio, you cannot respond. I mean the radio, the regular radio. Okay. Through a channel between two or more persons, either verbally, that is through speech or writing, or non-verbally, by way of signals, behavior, gesture, posture, etc. The process of communication starts with the communicator or sender who has something to communicate with others, which can be an idea, information, fact, or anything else. Thereafter, the sender encodes the message by selecting the language in which the receiver can correctly understand. The medium of expression can be speaking, writing, eye contact, facial expression, gesture, posture, etc. Thereafter, the message is developed by the communicator using the right set of words and language. The message is the main element of the entire communication process. The channel implies the carrier of the message, which can be face-to-face -face communication, telephonic conversation, video calling, letter, email, SMS, facial expressions. Uh, let me just say something about uh, her beautiful words here. The sender will send to the receiver. So he will do encoding, encoding, then send the message. The message will go through a channel. The receiver will receive the message. He has to decode it. So if I send as a sender, sender encode, the receiver decode, like you see here. If the sender encode, the receiver decode. What is the meaning of encode and decode? Let me explain to you something. Encode, like when you see, when you are walking in the road, passing a traffic light, and you see it red, it sends you encode red. You are as a receiver decode it in your brain that red means not to walk. Red means to stop. So the encode is sent by the sender and the decode is, is sent by the receiver back. Okay. Body language, tone of voice, etc. Also, what is the feedback? A feedback from the receiver. As example, now I will tell you after I finish the lecture. Did you understand the meaning of communication? then you will give me a feedback and say, yes, I understood it. We understood what is the meaning of communication. So there is a, a sender encode and the feedback always from the receiver side. I, I will tell you, did the delivery come to you now? The food delivery came to you? I sent you a question. So you will give me a feedback and tell me, yes, the delivery came and gave me the food or no, I didn't get the food yet. Okay, so this is, we call it feedback. Another example, the sender is me now telling you everything about communication. The feedback that I make sure that you understood it through exam or assignment, that if you understood it or you did not understood it, that means a feedback. So this is the sender send encode and the receiver always uh, send the decode or do the decode and send a feedback. Okay. It's also through the channel. 
So the sender will send through the channel and the receiver will also send through a channel. It may be the same channel or maybe another channel. Okay, I will receive a telephone from you, from my boss. This is a sender. The boss send a, a message to me through the email. And I have to send him the feedback. I might send him by email or I might send him by the phone. Raise up the phone, send the, my cell phone and talk to him and tell him, yes, I received your message. And the answer is blah, blah, blah. So this means uh also a kind of so this is the, the the circle or the communication process between the sender and the receiver and let us listen to her what she's saying here receiver is the person to whom the message is directed that is to whom the communicator or sender wants to communicate it is very important for the sender to understand the receiver's decoding abilities interpretation capacity for an effective communication the next step is decoding, which involves interpretation of the message by the receiver. After decoding the message, the receiver will revert back to the sender in the form of feedback. It is very essential part of the entire communication process as it indicates that there is no distortion of the message. For this purpose, the receiver looks for the channel in the same way as sender communicated to the receiver. The communication can be regarded as effective when the message received and interpreted in the same sense that the sender intended to convey. An effective communication is always receiver oriented rather than message oriented. The communicator should make sure that the receiver interprets the message accurately and properly. Types of communication. Com Here is very nice this part. Types of communication, we said Communication is very important for the success of a project. We said communication is very important for the success of a project. Let's see here. And I will put also another chapter video for the communication because it's important. Let us see here what is said about the types of communication. Communication can be classified on the basis of channels and on the basis of purpose. Based on channels, there are three types of communication Verbal communication, non-verbal communication, and visual communication. Verbal communication involves the use of words and language in conveying the information. It can be oral communication and written communication. Oral communication can be in the form of face-to-face -face communication, voice chat, video conferencing, telephonic conversation, etc. Whereas written communication can be in the form of letters, SMS, emails, reports, etc. Nonverbal communication is the communication without the use of words. That is, communication through body language, eye contact, facial expressions, hand movement, appearance, tone of voice, etc. Visual communication. Visual communication is the one that takes place through visual aids. That is, signs, typography, drawings, graphics, colors, etc. Based on purpose, the communication can be classified as formal communication, and informal communication. Formal communication is the one that follows a predefined flow in communicating the message. Formal communication and informal communication. Formal is that between the employers and employee, between an employer and his employee at work. This is formal. Informal is between friends, between friends, between a person, another person, which is carrying a private message, as example. Okay. It can be vertical communication, horizontal communication, or diagonal communication. Lastly, informal communication. Informal communication is the casual communication, which does not follow predefined flow in conveying the message. Next, we will discuss the seven C's of communication. Clarity. Clarity of message is the first and foremost requirement. For having a good communication, there must be clarity, correctness. If you didn't send a correct message, what are you expecting from the receiver? Because you send it wrong, he will understand it in a wrong way. So the sender must make sure, those are things the sender must make sure that it's there in the letter or in the message. It must be there, those factors, those elements, 
the elements of communication, there must be the seven CS of communication. Clarity, it must be clear, correctness, completeness. When you send a message, it must be complete. You don't have, you must not keep apart without uh, declaring or clarifying or demonstrating. Con concreteness, concreteness, it's solid and it's um, not going to branches. It's always solid in the core, in the, co the core of the topic which you want to talk about. Conciseness, it's very short, very short. Coherence, it is um, related and binded to each other. Its parties are binded to each other. Uh, courtesy means it's carrying kind of the respectful behave. Okay, let us see what she's saying here. Of the effective communication, hence the language used must be simple and straightforward. Correctness, the message must be correct in the sense that the message must be free from all grammatical and spelling errors. Further, the message should be exact and well-timed. Completeness, the message must be complete in the sense that the message should contain all the facts and information required by the recipient. Concreteness. This means that the content of your communication must be tangible. That is, there must be sufficient evidence to support your argument. Conciseness. A short and precise message is always preferred. So, to make the message well understood, avoid the use of irrelevant words and details. Coherence. There must be a coherence in writing and speech. That is, there must be a logical relationship between the words, sentences, and paragraphs. So, the points should be sequential, well-organized, and interconnected. Courtesy. Courtesy is the essence of communication, which implies that the sender must be polite, respectful, open, and honest with the receiver. So, guys, this brings me... So, courtesy means that you have to be polite, like what we said before. Now I'll go back to my own PowerPoint, to the slides, to our PowerPoint slides together, and we will say what are the elements of the uh, ideal communication. So we'll say here, what are the elements? Here we'll put uh, new slides. Sorry about that, I should take it from here, new slides. And here I will say what are the elements of effective communication process? What are the elements of effective communication process? And we will keep here about three, about five minutes, about five minutes in this uh, page. What are the elements of effective communication process? Uh, we will stop here for about five minutes to get your answers. Also, again, I'm telling you, please send your answer. You can send your answers on the Google chat. So we are back. We'll move now to the last part of our lecture today, uh, which is, what did you come to learn? Did you come to learn from today's lecture, from today's lecture? What are the points which we talk about? I just want you to remember the effective uh, 
project, the characteristics of the effective project, the planning, the communication, those five things which we talk the appraisal, those five points which we talk about, and try to remember uh, what we talk in details about those points. You can write in about two, three, four, whatever you want, whatever you wish, no limits for your answer. Uh, you can send the answers also on the shared box here. For me, I will wait here like around uh, five to seven minutes, like around seven minutes for having answer for this question. What and expect always in each lecture of us that this question will be always there. What did you come to learn from today's lecture? Thank you so much. We'll stop here like around five minutes. We are back. So what did you come to learn from today's lecture was the last question today. Shall see you on the next lecture. Stay safe. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye bye.